of the consequence occurred on the 9th, but on the 10th of July at daylight. Officer of the watch informed me that a small schooner was standing out from the French squadron towards the ship, upon which I ordered everything to be ready for making sail in chance, supposing she might be sent for the purpose of reconnoitering. On approaching, she hoisted a flag of truce and joined us at 7 a.m. She proved to be the Mouche, tender to the ships of war at the Isle Dex, and had on board General Savary, Duke de Revigo, and countless causes, Chamberlain to Bonaparte, charged with a letter from Count Bertrand, Grand Marechal de Palais, addressed to the Admiral commanding the British cruisers before the port of Rochefort. Soon after the Mouche arrived, I was joined by the Falmouth, bringing me a letter and secret orders from Sir Henry Hotham, some extracts from which I shall insert for the better understanding what follows previous to entering into what passed with Bonaparte's attendants. I sent a chasse to you yesterday with a letter, and you will now receive by the Falmouth officially the orders which I therein made you acquainted with. I send you four late and very interesting French papers by which you will see all that has been done and said in the subject of providing for Bonaparte's escape from France. You will see that the Minister of the Marine had been directed to prepare ships of war for that purpose and that they were placed at Bonaparte's disposal and that two frigates in particular had been provided for him. Also that it was announced to the two chambers that he left Paris at four o'clock on the 29th. Likewise, it was believed in Paris that he had taken the road by Orléans to Rochefort and I have no doubt that the two frigates at the Isle Dex are intended for him and I hope you will think so too. I am sure you will use your utmost endeavors to intercept him. I am sorry I have not a frigate to send you. I have little Literally none but the Indemnian under my orders. Captain Patterson is off breast by Lord Keith's order, and the Phoebe is also ordered to that station when the Havers arrived off to Gironda. The attention at home appears to be paid chiefly to the ports in the channel, but I have received no additional means whatever to guard those of the bay. I have long been expecting a frigate from the Irish station, but none has yet appeared, and I have written to Lord Keith for two frigates, but they cannot join me in time. I fear. Extract of an order from Rear Admiral Sir Henry Hotham, the Lord's Commissioners of the Admiralty, having every reason to believe that Napoleon Bonaparte meditates his escape with his family from France to America, you are hereby required and directed in pursuance of orders from their lordships, signified to me by Admiral the Right Honorable Viscount Keith, to keep the most vigilant lookout for the purpose of intercepting him and to make the strictest search of any vessel you may fall in with, and if you should be so fortunate fortunate as to intercept him. You are to transfer him and his family to the ship you command, and there keeping him in careful custody, return to the nearest port in England, going into Torbay in preference to Plymouth, and all possible expedition, and on your arrival you are not to permit any communication whatever with the shore, except as herein after directed, and you will be held responsible for keeping the whole transaction profound secret until you receive their lordship's further orders, in case you should arrive at the port where there is a flag officer. You are to send to acquaint him with circumstances strictly charging the officer sent on shore with your letter not to divulge its contents. And if there should be no flag officer at the port where you arrive, you are to send one letter express to Secretary of the Admiralty and another to Admiral Lord Keith with the strict injunctions of secrecy to each officer who may be the bearer of them. Monsieur Savary and Las Casas, who came on board from the schooner above mentioned at 7 o'clock on the 10th of July, presented the following letter to me. Le 9 juillet 1815. This is in French. Translation. I'll just do the translation. Translation. Sir, the Emperor Napoleon, having abdicated the throne of France and chosen the United States of America as a retreat, is with his suite at present embarked on board the two frigates which are in this port for the purpose of proceeding to his destination. He expects a passport from the British government, which has been promised to him, and which induces me to send the present flag of truce to demand you, sir, if you have any knowledge of the above mentioned passport, or if you think it is the intention of the British government to throw any impediment in the way of our voyage to the United States. I shall feel much obliged by your giving me any information you may possess on the subject. 
I have directed the bearers of this letter to present you my thanks, to apologize for the trouble it may cause your excellency's most obedient count, Marshal Bertrand. The bearers of this letter had instructions to demand of me whether I would prevent Bonaparte from proceeding in a neutral vessel, provided I could not permit the frigates to pass with him on board. Having received my orders, the strictest injunctions to secrecy, and feeling that the force on the coast at my disposal was insufficient to guard the different ports and passages from which an escape might be effected, particularly should the plan be adopted of putting to sea in a small vessel, I wrote the following reply to the above communication, hoping by that means to induce Napoleon to remain for the Admiral's answer, which would give time for the arrival of reinforcements. HMS Bell Everything off Rochefort, July 10th, 1815. Sir, I have to acknowledge the receipt of your letter of yesterday's dates addressed to the Admiral commanding the English cruisers before Rochefort acquainted me that the Emperor, having abdicated the throne of France and chosen the United States of America as an asylum, is now embarked on board the frigates to proceed for that destination and awaits passport from the English government and requesting to know if I have any knowledge of such passport or if I think it is the intention of the English government to prevent the Emperor's voyage. In reply, I have to acquaint you that I cannot say what the intentions of my government may be, but the two countries being at present in a state of war, it is impossible for me to permit any ship of war to be put to sea for the Port of Rochefort. As to the proposal made by the Duc de Rovigo and countless causes of allowing the emperor to proceed in a merchant vessel, it is out of my power, without the sanction of my commanding officer, Sir Henry Hotham, who is at present in Quiberon Bay, and to whom I have forwarded your dispatch, to allow any vessel, under whatever flag she may be, to pass with a personage of such consequence. I have the honor to be, sir, your very humble servant, Fred L. Maitland.